Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, we're coming to you live from Harlem in New York City. I'm Alex, and this is a Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the West Coast we go for another edition of Let's Talk to Larry. Hello, Larry. Another, another edition of We're Still Alive. <laughs> Yeah, we're still above room temperature. Unlike, unlike, well, it's, uh, we lost, what, three in the last uh, couple of days? So. Well, uh, this is, of course, uh, well, uh, this will run uh, this week, so it'll be in in time for these people. Let's yeah. see, who do we lose? First of all, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting now. They just happened oh, so fast. Christofferson? Mm-hmm. Lost Chris they? Christofferson. You know, people, people, go, people go, oh, gee, I'm so sad that he's gone. Gee, yeah, yeah, right. He'll, uh, he won't be able to create any new music. <laughs> well, what has he done in the last 20 years? You know, I mean, he had one period of great productivity, and then the rest of it was making movies, right? Yeah. You know, but I mean, he wrote some great songs. I'm not going to deny him that. But he was 88, you know, uh, and not a young man and uh, lived a good life. So happy journey, you know, that's the way I feel about it. Uh, he made a lot of money. Yeah. Who else do we lose? Uh, no, uh, actress, I'm not that familiar with Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith, I'm very familiar with Maggie Smith because I watched Downton Abbey and she played the Dowager on Del Downton Abbey. But she also, you know, you go all the way, way back to the beginning of her career with the prime of Miss Jean Brody, right? Okay. Uh, and, and also, she was in all the Harry Potter pictures, so people know her from there. Oh, okay. I did not know that. She's always been working. You know, it's just a matter of people hiring her or not. You know, so. Uh, and how old was she? She oh. was uh, 89, I believe. Okay. Okay, so 88, 89, okay. This means I got another at least five years. Yeah, left. another five. <laughs> Who else? Who was the other one? Uh, Pete Rose. Pete Rose, yes, of course we lost him. How old was he? Uh, 83. 83. What did he die of? Uh, they don't know yet. Uh, apparently a family member found him in his house, I'm guessing heart attack. So. That would probably be the best, you know. You know what I don't understand about people who die of heart attacks? I'm having trouble talking today. Uh, 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 people who die of heart attacks or they die of prostate cancer or they die of this, they die of that. And they're rich people. They're wealthy people. And I'm thinking, don't they have good medical care? I mean, don't they go in and have their heart checked once a year? You would think. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Uh, you know, well, Dana Carvey had uh, great medical care, and they uh, they cleared the wrong artery. On well, his, uh, yeah, well, that was a, that was a, a major screw up. Yeah, you know, uh, he uh, explained the situation. He he went in for a heart problem, I think. He had a he had a, a blocked artery. This was ninety eight, a long time ago, but. Uh, so he's feeling chest pains. Oh, you got to block your artery. You got to get this cleared out. So he did it, and it was happened at the uh, what's the general Marin General. Marin General. Well, I've been there before. I'm, okay, so uh, uh, you could die in that hospital. Yeah, that's yeah. what I've heard. Yeah, <laughs> you would not think in Marin that would be possible. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah. he got the surgery, and then a uh, uh, couple weeks after the surgery, he was doing a little hike, and he felt the same pain he was having before the surgery. And I guess he went down to Cedars in L.A., and they said, "Man, this guy." Oh, we we just lost uh, we just lost bubbles. Wow. Yeah. Blame Skype, ladies and gentlemen. Oh no, he well he's still online. He's still talking. So uh, let's see here. Let's get him, try and get him again. There we We're go. back. Yeah, there we go. We're back. We left you off. At, he went to Mount Sinai. Uh, Cedars, 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 Cedars. Sinai. Yeah. So uh, so they said you. Uh, they my, my hospital is Mount Sinai. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they said. They said the the guy who ever did the surgery, they cleared the good artery. They messed with the good artery and left the bad one still clogged up. So he had to have the surgery done again. Oh, boy. But he did get a, uh, won a big lawsuit, and I think he gave it all to charity. Did he really? Yeah. How nice of him. Could have given it to us. He could have given it to us, <laughs> but he didn't. Uh <laughs> You work with Dana a lot. You're, yeah. you're like his opening act when he does anything. And he he, uh, he made a big comeback on Saturday Night Live last week. I saw that. It was very good. So. It, it was incredible. That You know, his uh, his Biden was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, it could have been more perfect. So it was, uh, it was a, good, a good impression. I wonder if they'll use him again for that. They should. You know. I think he told me he's coming back for three more before the election. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Good. He must be happy to be back at NBC in New York. You know. Yeah, they love him there. And uh, who? I thought Jim Gaffigan did a good impression of the. Uh, oh. <laughs> the oh, he was wonderful. He was just. They were all very good. Um, uh, Maya Rudolph as. Maya Rudolph, yeah. Perfect. Just perfect. That's the way Saturday Night Live used to be. It was actually funny again. Well, yeah, well, I liked what, uh, uh, what's her name, the host of the show said in her monologue. She said, when I first saw Saturday Night Live, uh, I thought SNL meant Saturday Night Laughs. She said, then I saw the show and I uh, uh, understood I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, I mean, um, it's nice to see Dana... Back in full form, you know? Yeah, such a great guy. Yeah, he is a good guy. He's a good guy. Mm -hmm. And I always think of him as a good guy because he hires you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know. Um, it, Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, we could identify him as the world's number one opening act. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're really, a, if I was a comedian, you'd be the first guy I'd call, you know? Oh really? Wow. Oh, oh yeah. No, I mean you. Here's what you do that is so good for a comedian to have as an opening act. You don't spoil the room. You know. Now, if people don't understand what I'm talking about, you explain spoiling the room to my audience. Uh, someone could come out with an act that was so high energy that kind of changes that for the main act to follow. It's. Uh... Like Dana said, the best thing about an opening act, you just kind of get the crowd focused. Well, you get the crowd focused, but most of all, you set the room up. You, what you're doing is you. a lot of comedians have this idea. I'm going to go and I'm going to blow the uh, the uh, the headliner off the stage. Yeah, I've right. heard that from so many comics, which is the worst thing you want to well, do. Well, your job is not to do that. You've been hired to set up the stage for the net for the uh, you know the main comic the headliner right uh but a lot of comics don't do that so if you're a comic you really want somebody like larry bubbles brown who really sets up the room gets them laughing and so on but doesn't spoil it by uh oh being too loud that's one kind of guy you don't want to follow uh, a guy who plays any instrument of any kind in his act. You don't want that. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's death. And you don't want a guy who juggles, you know, or does something like that. 
because you just can't follow. It's very hard to follow that kind of thing because the room yeah. is not set up for you coming out going, well, good evening, ladies and germs, you know, so... Uh, it, it's uh, it, it's interesting what we how how they you know what a what a uh, opening act should be and you're the perfect opening act. It's not that you're well, not. Well, you did. You were a good opening act when you had your shows. You always open for our for the comics. Yeah, I kind of set up the room, but you know I didn't have to do that much. Here's what I would do with a comedy show. This is I'm sure you noticed it. Uh, I always, for my opening act, put the second best act I had. And the reason why was I don't want somebody opening the show that isn't that good. I want a guy who's really good, but he's not as good as the headliner. So I always opened with my second best act. And that was very smart and because I, the, the big mistake comedy clubs have made forever is they have the opening act as a guy that's the newest in comedy. Right. And opening the show is not really easy. for And and you get these guys. That, so you start the show in a bad note, and people are starting to wonder, did I make a mistake coming in here? Yeah, you know? well, that's why I always, like, for instance, uh, you know, I would have run you as an opening act. I would have. I, one time, I uh, I had to explain to, um, uh, what's his name who died? Kravitz. Yeah, well, no, not Kravitz. Uh, it was uh, 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 the black comic who died. Warren. Warren. Warren Thomas. Warren Thomas. I had to explain to Warren Thomas. He says, "Why are you using me as the opening act?" Yeah, and he I thought it was an insult. Yeah, I said it's not an insult. It, it's because you're the second best on the bill. As you know, we have a headliner, and you're the second best on the bill that I've got here, and I need you in that opening place to set the room up to make people really laugh. What I would do is I would bury the least funny guy in the middle. Right. Okay. And that was usually you. No. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you had a good uh, sense of showmanship, which I wish the comedy clubs would wake up to this. Well, I'm, it's amazing that they didn't, um, that, uh, that they never followed that lead, that they always felt that you, oh, you, you know, you, you have the uh, least, uh, uh, least funny comic on first. What? That's not how you open a show. No. You know. And you're right. I did have a sense of show business, which most of these other people didn't have. Right. You know. And uh, the only place where I saw that, Boston, sometimes the headliner would open the show mm -hmm. and introduce all the, th the three other acts. Yeah. Well, that, uh, uh, you could. Some clubs, what they did do is they got a good comic to be the MC. And then the good comic would introduce people and then in between do his act. Right. And that kept it funny. Okay. But you never want to be funnier than the than the headliner. You're setting up no, for the headliner. No. You know, and, and this idea of, well, I'm going to blow him off the stage. Oh, that's not your job, pal. That's not why we hired you. We hired you to set the table. The uh, the uh, main comic, you know, the headliner. So that's you know that was my theory in comedy. And yeah, yeah, comics are always so competitive; they want to blow each other off the stage. So it got to the point where I had the middle act say, "Am I that bad?" Because <laughs> 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 you know? usually I would do five acts on a show, right? You know, <laughs> and the opening act would do uh, about ten minutes, fifteen minutes, maybe, you know. And uh, the headliner would always do whatever they wanted to do. Usually it was expected to be, what, 40 minutes, I think? Right. You know. Um, but I, everybody, uh, but I think I even had headliners do shorter sets. I believed in shorter sets. That's why I ran five comics, because with shorter sets, the comics are doing their A material. Uh, when you do 40 minutes... There's some of the B material in there. By the time you go oh, to yeah. an hour, there's a lot of the C material in there. So yeah. why not tell a headliner, do 25 minutes? 
Oh, really? 45 to an hour is such a long time. Well, for you especially, you've never been a comic who works that long. No, I don't have that high. you got to have a certain amount of energy to do a long set, I think. What's the longest you've ever gone? I've done an hour a couple of times, but I didn't, you know, it's just something I didn't like to ever like to do. Yeah, yeah. You would prefer to do what? I like to do 15 to 20. 15 to 20? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Although I did 30 for... Uh, in Pleasanton last week, which is actually kind of fun. Your your buddy uh, Len was out there. Oh, Len LaFrisco. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He mentioned it to me. Yeah. So it, it's it's you know, uh, 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 how long comedians do is really dependent upon how much how much A material they have. I didn't want them to get past their A material. No. I mean, I realize there is B material in an act, and and. Again, this is things that people don't know about comedy, but the comedians, when they build their act, they build a dead spot in the middle. Am I right? Yeah. In other words, they build kind of a dead spot in the middle so they can. it, it goes in an arc where you start off with your really good material. Hi, I'm Larry... Larry. And then it goes in the valley, and then you have the uh, then you save the big killer closer. Exactly, exactly. I won't ask you what your killer closer is because you ru you'll ruin it for everybody out there <laughs> yeah. who wants to go see you. Well, uh, Do you always finish with the same thing? Pretty much, yeah. How long have you been finishing with that? Oh, years, I guess. Really? Yeah, it's like. As you know, you can't. As creativity's done after the age of sixty, so I'm not going to come up with anything new. You know, as Slayton once said to me, he gave me a, a Bobby Slayton in case people don't know who I'm talking about. Uh, he said to me that uh, uh, now, what did he say to me? Uh, <laughs> oh, he said, I I always got to come up with new material because people come back to see me, and I don't want to have them see me do the same material. And I said to him, don't you understand? That's what they came to see. You know? Yeah, it's, uh, and they're bringing their friends to see you. And then they're saying, the friends, you know, listen to this. This is good. This is really yeah. good. You know, uh, you can do the same act for quite a while and not bore people and have them keep coming back because it's more how you deliver it and your presence on stage is the most important thing. You know. Yeah, when I, in fact, before I was a comic, I saw Bobby Slayton, and I took friends down. We, I must have seen him five or ten times. Yeah, and pretty much, the, the great thing about Slayton was he always started off differently every time. Right. And then he would slowly work his way into the same material, and he would fool even me. Because I figured, you know, oh, he's got new material here. But then he would gently go into the old material. And he was brilliant at that. He was brilliant at, at uh, structuring his act. So, you know. But here we are talking about the business of show. The business of show. <laughs> Did you How long has show business been around? <laughs> it's been around forever. I'm sure it's. A, I'm sure back in the days of early Greece, there was some guy going. But seriously, folks. <laughs> you know? well, yeah. Well, I guess there was always theater, and mm -hmm. uh, then wasn't it? Uh, who was a Buffalo Bill Cody had a big gigantic show in the 1870s or something. Yeah, but it was like a circus show. I mean, it was right. you know it was a Western themed circus. You know, but I, I'm trying to think about if, if we were to go back and say who's the first stand up. I mean, a guy who gets on stage and just tells jokes. I don't know who that is. That's a good question. I mean, you know, you go back to vaudeville, and usually the comedians in vaudeville were teams, you know. And I don't know that I can remember anybody in vaudeville that I remember who literally was a stand-up comic who got on the stage and started telling jokes. I don't think that developed until the 50s. 
I don't think that happened until we saw Lenny Bruce and Mort Saul and people like that. Because you go back before that, and if they were st- comedians that went on stage, they did a full act with music and everything else. They sang, they danced, they, you know, and they joked. But I'm trying to think. Yeah, it was, it was teams like Martin and Lewis and Abbott and Costello. And- yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to think, who was, who was the first stand-up? Moms Mabley did stand-up. Okay, so we can go back to Moms Mabley now. How, who was before that? I, I really don't remember. I'm not very good at remembering that kind of stuff. Mark Twain. Well, Mark Twain, did he, he actually got up and did stuff, didn't he? Someone told I read some book where he actually, they said he was kind of like a stand-up. He had this big closing bit where he duck-walked around the stage. That was his closing. He duck-walked around the stage and said it brought the house down. I don't know what it was, but maybe he was like a stand-up. Well, I mean, maybe that that would be a, a good example of it. But, you know, again, I'm trying to think when I go back to, to vaudeville, were there any guys that came out on their own, nobody else, and did an act? And in vaudeville, of course, the acts were a variety of acts. I mean, you know, they juggled. Yeah, W.C. Fields was kind of like a, uh, he did magic or juggling and... Uh... I don't know if he did any jokes or not. Yeah, but I who? who so. But uh, I guess Mom's Mabley is the, the one that I remember as being a singular comic that went on stage and did material. Um, prior to that, I can't think of anybody. That's funny because you know you go back to, uh, I mean, all the silent film comedians were film comedians they weren't stage comedians i mean keaton never had a stage act chaplin never had a stage act um and a a lot of the comedians like burns and allen came from vaudeville but they were a team yeah so i i i don't think until the 50s maybe uh, with mom's mabley early a little earlier than that uh, that we first saw the stand-ups. And, I, you know, Mort Saul would get up and do his act, and you had uh, 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 Lenny Bruce, and then you had a whole bunch of people that came up. And, you had Shelley Berman and Newhart. Yeah, they were all stand-ups. So you don't really see stand-ups till the 50s in, in any great profusion. That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I, I never stopped to think about that. Did Jack Benny do stand up or yeah, was it? Ben, Jack Benny did stand up. Yeah, you might you might have gone back to earlier than Mom's Mabley. Yeah, because uh, 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 he came out with a violin and he uh, told jokes. I would say Benny. Yeah, you got you, you thought a good one. But, you know, again, there weren't very many people. And, and Benny, if you think about it, he played the violin, so that was more, more of a variety act in those days. I'm, I, he, I don't know if he ever just came out. And, uh, he was, God, he, I think he was a stand-up. I have, to, I have to call him a stand-up. And then he went into radio. And basically, he was just doing stand-up in radio. You know? hmm. So, yeah, I would have to, you know, but who invented stand-up? That would be a good thing <laughs> yeah. to try and find out. I wonder where we would go to find that sort of thing out. I'd have to look that up, probably, you know. Who was the first stand-up? They'll probably say Aristophanes, you know, or somebody like that. So, uh, Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But, you know, it's a long tradition, and uh, it's been around for at least uh, 70 years now, that we know. And if we go back to Benny, it's longer than that. It could be close to 100 years, you know. It, but, would it be? But, what? Would it be considered an art form? Uh, it, I think it is. I, I think there's nothing more. Quite frankly, I think there is no kind of thing in show business that's as courageous as stand-up, where one guy plants his feet on the stage and then tries to make a whole bunch of people laugh. I mean, imagine that. What you're doing is you're going up and you're trying to elicit a 
a visceral response from an audience based on something you've said. And when you don't get that visceral response, boy, you're, 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 nobody dies worse than a comic on stage. <laughs> That's for sure, yeah. yeah. You know, which brings us to our next topic, which we'll do next time. Why is it everything in show business has to do with death? Like, I just killed them. I died up there. You know, a lot of death. I, that's true. I, the punchline, it's very violent. Uh, punchline, yeah. I, did, I hit him with a punchline, you know. I killed out there. Anyway, Larry Brown, so wonderful to talk with you once again. And As always, a great time, Alex. Especially about a business you and I both love. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Right. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah. There goes Larry. Bye, Larry. See you later. See you next week. Okay. He's been on. I think, you see, I, it's, it's hard to say. I go and I check to see how many copies of, you know, various interviews we've done with him we have. And it... I see it as 247. But if I go somewhere else, okay, it's like a lot higher than that. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure the next time we talk to him, the next couple of times we talk to him, it'll be, uh, it'll be you know, 250. Wow. Wow. We've been doing it with him since, what, 2016, I think? Something like that? Hmm. 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 Coffee. Coffee. I need my coffee. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see here. We got a couple of people waiting. That's all we got. We just got two people, as a matter of fact. So I will admit them anyway, and uh, we will uh, uh, just uh, see how they... Uh, how they who show up here? First of all, we got uh, we got Jeff. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Jeff is still trying to connect his audio, uh, but uh, on the other hand, we've got Charlie who has already connected. Oh, there's there's Jeff. Yeah. How you doing, Jeff? You okay? How are they? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're fine. First of all, we got. Oh, the, wait a minute! You got to yes. turn your audio oh. down. How are you? Jeff, Jeff Good. is still trying to connect his audio. Get rid of your audio. On the other hand, we've got Charlie, who has already connected. Oh, there's there's Jeff. Yeah. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm okay. good. No, Jeff, you you you. We got your audio coming through. Yeah, oh, I gotta. Oh, oh wait a minute, you gotta okay. turn your audio oh. down. You, yeah, Jeff is still trying to connect his audio. Get rid of your audio. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You got it. No, now you didn't get it. Now you've just. Uh, now we have no audio yeah. from you. Oh boy! One, if I, I wish I could go up there and just show them how to do this, you yeah. know, or I wish I had some kind of control over his machine and could just set it up, you know. But anyway, yeah. hello uh, there, Charlie. How you doing? Hey, doing pretty good. Hey, it's just the two of us. Well, That's the three right. of us. Three of us. Myself. Where is everybody? I don't know, you know, who knows, you know, well, we'll see if we have any, uh, any, uh, we haven't heard from Brian this week. No, I don't know what he's up to. I don't know what ha what's happening to Brian. Huh, that's strange, because he, he usually makes a pretty good go of it, you know? Yeah. Uh, so well, anyway, we well. just lost uh, Jeff. Okay, so now we just got you and me. Uh, yeah, but, well. uh, but I don't know what, what happened. Oh, yeah, where is uh, where is Brian? You know, I can't remember if he posted on Facebook. I don't even remember seeing anything. Maybe he's on vacation. I don't know. Could it be? I don't know. Uh, he usually would say he was on vacation. You know, or he was going yeah. on vacation or whatever. But anyway, um, uh, it's just you and me, old pal. Yep. Yeah. What, what can we talk about? Well, what do you want to talk about? Uh, well, I could rat, 
rattle on about how much I hate the fact that their Liz Cheney is is going out with Kamala and on uh, and campaigning. Why? Because she's evil. <laughs> I'm sorry, she's evil. Just because we agree with one thing on one thing, there's eight million things we don't agree on. Mm-hmm. She's anti-choice. Yeah, but you know something? I'll tell you. Uh, the fact that she's willing to stand up for Liz Chain, uh, for uh, uh, Kamala Harris, uh, it speaks volumes about her. That while she may have thoughts that you don't agree with and politics you don't agree with, she's willing to go over to the other side when it benefits the country. And so she does have some morals, she does have some scruples. Well, she definitely has scruples and she gave up her. her- congressional seat because to do the right thing yeah yeah so you got to hand it to her for that right yeah but i'm just saying and then of course dick cheney's also endorsing kamala and he is pure evil well you know whatever you think of them you know the fact that they can put aside their personal politics and come out for somebody i mean you know dick cheney doesn't have to do that well, you know, but he's doing it because there's a certain moral sense he has. It says, I can't let this guy, Donald Trump, become president again. Well, he had, he had a good deal his eight years with, with George W. Bush. And, uh, you know, he doesn't want to see that go away. And he's, he's afraid, like the rest of us, that if Trump gets back in, he's going to throw the Constitution in the, in the toilet and take over as dictator. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question here. Okay, and I, this is going to drive you crazy when I ask you the question. But it's a, it's a uh, uh, it, it's simply a question I'm asking as a uh, oh, what can I call it? Just a, a what if kind of thing. Why do we suddenly feel that all of a sudden Donald Trump is going to take our country and throw the Constitution out the, out the window? Because he said he was going to do it. Now, I know he said he was going to do it, okay, but... Um, and he tried to do it in, in 2021. Are, are, we too, are, are we too fearful about Trump? I mean, I, I don't want to see him be president. And I think that he could certainly do a lot of damage to this country in four years. Certainly, he, heaven knows he did enough damage already, you know. Yeah. But, you know, do we sometimes get a little too paranoid about Donald Trump and his capability to do stuff? I mean, after all, we, we do have a—it a, a, kind of looks, uh, kind of, a, as I'm looking at the numbers and everything, like he's not going to—if he does become president, he's not going to have the Congress to back him up, you know? So you can't get away with much if you— hmm? The Supreme Court said he's he has immunity. He can lock up whoever is in charge in the Congress. Yeah. What are we going to do about that Supreme Court? Yeah. You know, I have no idea what we're going to do about the Supreme Court. Fire some of them. You can't. <laughs> you can't. No, Pray that they have a heart attack. <laughs> well, you you could impeach them. You know, yeah. but they would have to do something impeachable. You know, just because oh. you don't like them and you want to get them out of there is you can't impeach them. You have to impeach them because they committed some kind of uh, illegal act. Now, in the case of uh, Clarence, Thomas, Clarence Thomas, I think yeah. we got a good case there, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and uh, it, it didn't, uh, is it Alito, I think? That uh, that uh, that uh, that's been doing some kind of hinky stuff, you know. Yeah. He- so we want to get rid of two uh, two uh, conservatives on the court. But we could do it with that. We could also do it with if Kamala becomes president, we could just simply have her add another three members to the Supreme Court, and then kind of even the thing out, you know. So. Well, technically, I don't think she can do that. She she had to. Uh have Congress do that. Yeah, well, if, if she's handed a Congress, I mean, it, it kind of looks like we're going to have a Congress that maybe is both in, in the Senate and in the Congress are uh, Democrats. 
We can only hope. So anyway, I don't know. I just I'm I'm just planning on going to uh, to Europe and staying there. Yeah. Mm. All right. So. Good. They have Wi-Fi. We'll see you there. Yeah. 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 Maybe you'll be able to change your background. Yes, I could. I could <laughs> get rid of the get rid of the skylight of uh, New York and show up the Eiffel Tower behind you or something. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Yeah. Um, either that, or I could take the same background we got here and just put the Eiffel Tower in the background. You know, <laughs> just fit it into the windows. But uh, anyway, so where is everybody tonight, folks? <laughs> is this a sports night of some sort or? There's some, some of that's going on. None of that's going on? Yeah. Well, I, I saw uh, the Mets and uh, who won, and it's still going ahead. Then. Oh, yeah. We're getting towards the end of that, aren't we? Yeah, we're in the playoffs now, yeah. We're in yeah. the playoffs. Okay. The Mets, is that baseball or football? <laughs> it's baseball. <laughs> Football's not until February, January, February. You can see how well I follow this shit. Yeah, well, I, I know who the 49ers and the A's are. Listen, I don't know much about sports, okay? But one thing I do know is what various seasons are, you know, even though they've expanded them. I mean, it used to be we had a very short football season in the winter. It started something like in what? Was it uh, October, something like that? Maybe September? And ended in December. Um, yeah. And then, and then, uh, and the, um, and then we have the uh, the, uh, uh, the what the Super Bowl? When's the Super Bowl now? It's not like the second Sunday in February. It used yeah, to be like it used to the be first Sunday in January. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they expanded that, and they haven't they expanded uh, basketball too. You know. And of course, well, there's more teams and more, more, more. Uh, yeah, it's just like four different playoff series in basketball. And uh, oh well, mm-hmm. hey, uh, basketball, you got basketball, and then you've got baseball has like uh, just extended itself all, all right. over the yeah. place, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't they used to have what yeah. 162 games? Was it? Well, they still have that. It's still 162 games. Yeah, but, but it's just as more teams. So there's there's a there's more people making the playoffs, and so that's why they have to have se- several. Okay, series. now the playoffs don't count towards that 162. No. Right. No, it doesn't. So it now we part. so yeah. now the the playoffs have extended the whole baseball season. You remember Reggie ja- Jackson was Mr. October. Mm-hmm. The playoffs ended in October. Well, now they go into November. Wow. Well, well, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's, but um, I, I'm glad, see, I know that, and Alan doesn't know that, so. Right. So, I've got it, got it down pat. Hi, well, there's a college football game on tonight, too, so. Is oh, there okay, really? thank you. Is it an important one? It's, it is. My daughter is in it. Or oh, is that the Oregon game? That's supposed to be a good game. Yeah, yeah. Oregon, Michigan, yeah. 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 Oregon. Oh. Beating them twenty-one to nothing. Okay. Wow. Said, right, so Kevin? maybe that's why we have nobody watch, listening tonight or calling in tonight. I know because it's on prime time now because they're Big yeah. Ten. Yeah. They're not just piss old Pac-12. They're Big Ten now. Well, also there are more places to put these games on because mm. uh, the uh, networks aren't doing so well, so they just as soon fill up the time with sports, right? Right. Pretty much. Money. Yeah. So. Whatever. Big money. So anyway, uh, that's a horrible idea. What time? I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to talk about. I really don't. You know, I'm getting so sick. We're we're what? We're one month away now from the what's the date today? Yeah. Yeah. Thirty one days yeah. or thirty two. Uh, uh, one day, one yeah. month from uh, yeah. today is well, the election. Fourth and it's November fifth. So mm-hmm. thirty yep. days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, I can vote now because I got my uh, my mail-in ballots. Are you? Do you do mail-in up in Connecticut, uh, Jeff? I think we do. Yeah. I'm gonna vote physically. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. I like to do that. I I kind of wonder about that. You know, I, I yes, I have the ballots here, but I here, here's what as I was saying last night. I can either do the to one of the following. I can either go, uh, uh, you know, to the polls, okay, or I can mail in my ballot. Now, what would you think was the most convenient of the two? Probably mailing in the ballot, right? Except in order to get to my polling place, I have to walk a half a block that way. And in order to mail my ballot, I have to go one block that way. A half a block that way. Oh, boy. So it doesn't really matter, does it? So, uh, you know, I'd go I, one way one night and go the other way the other night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't do that. You yeah, can't do, you, do that. Do you have problems in mailing things? No, I've got a post office right up a half a block away. Okay, no, and I'm saying once you deliver something, like you want to mail, say you want to sell mail something for me, send me a hundred dollars or whatever you want to say. <laughs> I'm not sending you a hundred dollars, but go ahead, I know, dream on. Uh, say you yeah. send me uh, I don't know, a picture of you, and do you have a chance that I'll never get it? Well, um, chances are pretty good that if I mail this ballot at my post office, it will get to where it's got to get. Because everybody knows where it's got to go. Yeah. You know, whereas if I'm, ma- if I'm mailing a letter to like Kevin, eh, maybe they don't know where exactly it's got to go. But, you know, I, I just, um, uh, I'm probably going to do it by mail. What the hell? Why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, even I'm when I'm mailed a lot of problems mailing oh. things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you going to do it, uh, uh, Charlie? You want to go down and vote on, at your polling place? So I, I do it by mail now, but even when I voted in person, I always voted early because you never know what will happen. I actually was in the hospital one election day. I wouldn't have gotten a vote if I hadn't voted early. Oh, ah, yeah. okay. We start, I think, the 25th mm-hmm. of October here. The polls are open. Mm-hmm. So we can go down any time then. So, you know, I mean, it, it, I, what's the most convenient for me? Probably, yeah. I don't know, if I go down and vote early uh, down the street, I think that'll be fine because it won't be like election night where there might be a line to wait to go in and so on. So, yeah, and that's the other reason for voting early, how voting do you, how, it by mail. Well, let's talk to the guy who does this kind of thing. Um. Uh, we seldom had a line mm-hmm. because the overwhelming amount of people do mail in. Mm-hmm. We've got a county here. The county's got 65,000 people in it. And we, we believe that it's about a third that actually come out and vote. If that, hmm. uh, if I had a, if I had a line out and we have four, what they call polling centers, scattered amounts, the, the county, and I run the busiest one, the second busiest. I guess the county is actually the busiest. Mm-hmm. But we're always neck and neck. And if I had uh, a line of two, three people, that was long. Hmm. Oh, so, okay. All right. Yeah. But as Because the, a lot how, of people are mailing them in. How long have you been or doing? They, or they fill them out and then drop them off for us to take yeah. over. How long have you been doing this? Uh, about 15 years. Okay. So have you seen the whole thing kind of change now? What? Big time. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I first started, there were lines, big lines. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it was, you know, one day and there was quite a few more uh, polling places. But as they went on through the years, they, you know, shrunk down the polling places. And then when they went electronic and, didn't have to go through and look, you know, look through the books, you know, the big books that they had and you had to look up the name and then verify the, all the stuff. And that went away. God, I want to say about three elections ago, four elections ago now. 
Mm-hmm. We actually have iPads and all that stuff. Yeah. And you just look up the name and yes, mm-hmm. that's you and click, 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 go vote. Um, but that was the only time that we had any kind of lines. I had, a, you know, there was more polling centers, but there were lines. Okay. So now, now you've, there's less it, polling. Now centers. you've got mail in. Okay. Yep. As an option. Yep. Now, suppose somebody mails in and then they show up at your polling place to vote. Won't work. Won't work. Okay. Nope. That's what I because was it'll show it gets gets logged at the at the county mm-hmm. and when it shows up there. And I've had that happen several times. I've had people forget that they voted. Mm-hmm. They voted in their kitchen the first day and then mailed it in and then they come down, you know, a month later mm-hmm. to and I actually <laughs> we actually made it work. She says, no, I didn't vote. I didn't vote. Well, let's go take a look. And so we yeah. dig back into the records yeah. and we can find electronic scans. Okay. Is this your signature? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you voted. <laughs> you voted on this day from yeah. your house. It was received at the county on this day. We can tell you everything. Really? Yeah. Hell of a bitch. That's That's a you know, them. You for you. They don't yeah. let you vote more than once. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, no, they shouldn't, you know. Right. But I just yeah, it's, wondered. It's, how, in other words, I can get my mail-in ballot, but if I don't want to use it, I can just go right down to the polling place and they'll yep. accept. I tell vote. people yeah. to use it for fire starter or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because they like, now you now we have it, so you can bring it in, and and deposit it. At one point, we had, you know, certain boxes you had to put it into. But one year, I got into it with one guy because he didn't want anybody to touch it but himself and he wanted to put it in the the box that was wrong and i told him it's not going to get counted if you put it in there Mm -hmm. and he said i don't believe you and he stuck it in there and i went i just (laughs) threw away your vote you just threw away your vote and he goes well that's the way this thing works nowadays that's the way look i'm not going to argue with you have a nice night and i reported it and had to write it all up and you know there's a whole incident report that we write up and then they investigate it and make sure it doesn't get double counted, but you can tell the difference because of the way they're folded. Yeah. 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 So, anyway. so it, now you can go up and put your thing into the box that they didn't want you to put it in now. Yeah. Cause right. they just take all the boxes right. and they all go to the county. <laughs> we just take everything. You can put toilet paper in there and we'll count it. We'll put it in there as, it was listed as toilet. You put toilet paper in there, and it's you know, it's not a ballot, but you yeah. put it in there, and you can find it. <laughs> now you know I've been I mean, griping about this for the past couple of weeks, and I just I really don't understand it. I don't understand how it supposedly Kamala is neck and neck, so to speak. You know, uh, against a guy who has no morality whatsoever, who has all the things that if he, if, if he was known for being that way, people wouldn't vote for him in the past. I just don't understand it, you know? Uh, and this is why I don't pay attention to the polls, because a lot of times, yeah, they take their surveys and that sort of thing. People change their mind, number one. Number two, I think they want them to be neck and neck to get people motivated to come out. Right? Yeah. If you think it's going to be close, I got to get out there to make sure it goes over. Do you and think it's going to be I don't have be, a problem with that either. You think it's going to be close? <laughs> I don't know. I think it could be. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to be a big landslide. I'd be surprised if it was a landslide. How about you, to, uh, uh, Tony? <laughs> Charlie? Um, I still think it's going to be, I think she's probably going to win by more electoral votes than Obama did in 2008. So really, I just think there's just too many people that don't answer their phone, you know, or don't answer if somebody walks up on to them on the street, they don't answer. Well, they're not going to give them the answer. They necessarily believe they're going to do. Also, there's a great deal of difference between the simplicity of somebody asking you, who are you going to vote for? And then you showing up at the polls and sitting there in that booth all by yourself. And you go, dink, instead of dunk. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, and that's what it is. It's just a it's just a sample. I mean, I can't in my wildest imagination imagine that Donald Trump could win an election in this country considering all the baggage. Especially yeah. the things especially the things that Jimmy Kimmel and Seth Meyers are putting together these days. They're awesome. They just yeah. show more and more what an idiot he is. And and you know, it's like he said last night. What did he say the we thought the old guy was Joe, you know, Joe Biden. Now look. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he because is, he's 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 stepping on his wiener all over the place. He's senile. He can't. Yeah, yeah. he can't speak. He he goes off on weird sentences. He, they're just stuff you can't you can't even keep up with it. It's so bad. Now there are people uh, starting to walk out in droves out of his uh, out of yeah. his speeches, and his speeches are only half filled now. Yeah. 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 So that's got to be the indication of something, and what it's an indication of is enthusiasm. There it's is no the same enthusiasm. Old show. Yeah, there's no enthusiasm for Trump. You know, the, the thing I hate is we don't know what he's going to do to improve America if he gets elected. He's still talking. He's about never said. Yeah, talking no. about 2020. He hasn't come up with the health plan replacement for. Right. But or, you know, nothing. We we have no idea what he's going to do. What did J.D. Vance answer when asked the question? Uh, are you will? What do you, are you willing to admit that the the election in 2020 was uh, uh, legitimate? He wouldn't answer. And what, he didn't. No, but what did he answer? What did he say? We're looking mm-hmm. forward. We're not looking backward. We're looking yeah. forward. We're not looking backward. And we, reverse and we don't want to go in. Let me finish. Let me finish. We don't want to go back and look at that. You know, I, uh, we're looking forward. We're not looking backward. And yet the next night, Trump is on stage giving a speech complaining about 2020. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you can't have it both January ways. Sixth. They did the same thing with January Sixth. Yep. yep. You can't have it both ways. I'm sorry. You know, uh, if he's not willing to go back. You know, if he's if he's uh, willing to go back, then I guess we should uh, go back with him. You know, mm-hmm. it's just amazing, just amazing. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 I, the people that are supporting him have no clue what he's going to do when he gets into the White House if he gets that far. Nobody just, really knows. Well, They're let me ask you this: him. today we got some news. The first piece of news: these uh, Dow Jones has hit an all-time high today. Mm. At an all-time high. It's good news, right? Yeah. Yep. Also, um, what was the other thing? Um, uh, jobless rate is down. The jobless rate is 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 well is uh, down uh, to an all all-time low, I think. Right. Something like that. Close. So, to it, yeah. what are people going to say about all of this? You yeah. know. I mean, they, and then they started interviewing people and saying, are you able to afford things a little better right now? And a lot of them were starting to say yes. So uh, the economic factor is not going to be in play by the time she, it's time to vote for her. They're going to go mm-hmm. in and go, well, you know, I, I got 4%, I think it was 4% uh, increase in pay in this country on average? I mean, you know. And they're talking about cutting the interest rates twice before the end yeah. of the year. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, the if people can't complain about the economy. And the price of, uh, of eggs is going down and everything. It's all positive factors here. What do I you do? Take a all. chance on you know, Trump that it's going to go the other way? <clears throat> The most, the most that I've ever heard lately in these interviews that you talk to these people is all they have to say is that he says what he thinks. That's the only thing they're banking on now. Who cares? They say, well, I like him because he says what he, what he thinks, and he doesn't take any guff. Well, okay, what does that got to do with running the country? Nothing. No. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, and it doesn't seem that there's anything that he can figure out like what he wants to do. Yeah, no, no. He has no There's idea. No plan. And, he and says, I, I got a plan. If he and ever he became have. president, 
he may as well just not show up. Yeah. Well, yes, uh, Tony. Well, look, Tony's here, folks. Yeah. And you know, Alex, me and my brother. If we can't get Brian crumb. here, Tony, it's great having you here. Okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I was going to say? Me and my brother were discussing Trump, and my brother goes, and he goes, um, "Remember, he said you were getting more out of your paycheck each week." My brother's like, "Yeah, he was getting more out of his check, but then when he went to his tax guy, he had to pay it all back." Correct. Yeah. Like the bait and Remember switch. Remember that. From. He Remember gives you a little that? more, but then he's paying it at the end. The guy. Yeah. Yep. He did Sorry. that. If you were, I mean, a I remember that happening to me. Right. Yeah. It's happening to me. If you were a billionaire, Tony, you wouldn't have to pay more taxes when you went to your tax day. You get to well, keep more of it under Trump. I mean, and you know what I was thinking too, Alex? The more I'm watching him speak, the jobs report was great today. Inflation is down. Unemployment is down. You would make it. So, then I, me and my brother went over to one of his speeches, and it's bizarre world again. He. It is. It's like you would make it sound like the country running off a cliff with this guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, also, he he really hates America. I mean, America is nothing but full of crap. It's just nothing but problems. It's just the worst yeah. country in the world to live in. Right. You know? And, and the I, president we have is the worst president ever. I, I don't know that Americans want to hear that. You know, I think they'd like to hear that, oh, hey, things aren't very good right now, but I can make them better. But right. not create yeah. this absolute doom and gloom like he creates. Yeah. On the other hand, you've got Kamala, who's really all, you know, happiness and wax lips, you know? I mean... You, you know what I don't understand either, Alex? I was going to me and my brother discussing and go, they're all for, like... They want to take the, you know, the women's right to choose take away. But on the same token, they want to ax the Affordable Care Act. It's like it's like they really don't care about anybody. That I'm actually going to believe this, and this is not disrespect to Alan, and I'm just going to say it. If you still like Trump after all these charges against him, you're going to have a fucking screw loose really now. You better have a what? You're going to have a screw loose. How can you still like him up on all these charges? And you heard what he said now in that Jack Smith report? They told him Pence is in trouble. You know what he said? So, so what? Yeah. And when the around his neck. Yeah, what he said, he said his, it, basically his life was in Because well, you voted for this guy twice. No, that's not correct. Well, Phil told me you voted for him two times. Phil's a liar. <laughs> Phil's a liar. Uh, he, he voted for him. He voted, he voted for him once. Voted once. Once I won't oh, make that lying. mistake again, I can guarantee you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I mean, I don't but understand. Still. Look, I don't understand somebody like uh, like Phil Meyer, for instance, who is an. You're right. I mean, how can you rational? Who is a? He's not a stupid person. You know, he's not a moron. Uh, who is so still into Trump? I can see that he doesn't want to vote for Kamala. But I can't see how he wants to pull the lever for Trump. You know, either go go to the polls and pull every other lever on that uh, on that uh, voting machine, yeah. and don't pull the one for Donald Trump. See, I can live with that, Alex. I can exactly live with that. Or write somebody in. But I, I don't. You know, I'm going to say it really. I think you got to be a little. And this is no disrespect to, to say Phil. I don't mean it like that. I'm going to generalize. I think you really got to be a little racist, really, to be going with this guy still. Because, Alex, as long as I've been living, right, in my area in Queens, did you ever see people drive around with Trump flags, uh, let's go, Brandon? It's almost like I'm in Germany here. Well, you're, wait a minute, you're, wait a minute. you're in, in Queens. Queens they and you, you drive? It, no, but you see that in Queens. I don't see it here in Manhattan. Alex, here it's rampant. we got trucks going up and down with the flags. Wow. It's crazy. I mean, it's like, if, what if, you, if you have a car that says Trump on it, you may as well have a sign that says key me. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, you have the big scratch. Because yeah. you know, like, I'm walking the dog. I'm like, and the guy, it's the same guy, Alex. And he changes the flags on the car. Today it was take America back again. Yesterday was the revenge tour. We're on the revenge tour, I said. This is Does it have one that says, I will not comply? Because we got those around here, too. I, I will not comply. Also. What's a, what's uh, what does that mean? I will not come. I have no idea. Mean? I have no idea, but I I can show you a picture of one of my customers. I, I, I just I just saw one driving around tonight, and I have no idea what that meant either. 
When you said that just now, Kevin, I thought you were going to explain what it meant. No, I can't tell you. I have no idea. And, and you know what they're not going to go. Probably means that they aren't going to go with the with the uh, certification. Maybe I don't I know. Think so. I oh think yeah, so. you're right. They're ready. To, well, he's already Charlie. You hear him? He's already saying how it's it's pretty much you know I the mean, fix I, is I, in if he loses again. I, I wish somebody would call sure. this program tonight who is voting for Trump to tell us why. Oh, Alex, I voted for my mother by mail. If we're going to cheat, I'm also trying. I'm joking. What? No. <laughs> I should, Alex, try it, right? You think they'll get away with it? Yeah. Stop no. it nope. <laughs> oh, you been, you'll be in prison. Don't do that. No, nah, I didn't do it. I wonder if they, because she's gone. You know, I'm going to, you know, Charlie, you know what I do when I go vote? Can I see if she's still on the books there, except? No, yep. she wouldn't be. Well, maybe no, you think they wiped be. her off then, Alex? Well, it I, should have. The county should have wiped it off. Really yeah, yeah, but there, I, the problem has yeah. been that there's no coordination between the right. obituaries. There, That's what I was going to answer that. There never was a... a um, there are two different systems. There are probably 14 yeah. different I'm systems. I'm going to ask Alex if she's on there when they open the book, because my name is right under us. When yeah, you, you can do that. As a, I'm as a my mom's gone. Can I still vote for her from Great Beyond? She hated him. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, the 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 uh, thing is, they never coordinated. I think one of the things that was a uh, crazy, they never coordinated between the deaths and the births. Really? Yeah. 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 And so, therefore, if somebody died, mm. all you had to do was go and get their birth certificate. Okay. And mm -hmm. and and you can get yourself a, dr a driver's license and well, everything you else, know you know. Yeah. yeah, but try and do that now. You can't do that. There's have they too changed? Much... Have they changed? Oh, that? they got so much of a. There's so much just to get a birth certificate. It's like an act of Congress. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even your own. Even your own. What? What's yep. the problem with getting your own? Yeah. You got to come up with this piece of ID, this piece of ID, all the other crap that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. Then you have to be verified and then they'll send it to you. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Well, Tony, go check and see if, uh, you know. You know what I do, Alex? When I vote, I walk in and vote at my school over here. So when I go in, I tell my brother, says, Greg, I'm going to ask if mommy's still on the thing. I'm not going to say mom. Says, is that mother still on your Nancy? Because I know the little ladies are working too. So they know who my mother was. So was Yeah, like, they'll. They'll, they can look for you. Yeah. They and if she says, can, can I vote for him? <laughs> Let me vote for him. Well, and if that. she's there, be very take nice. That, that's say, almost take... like saying I got a bomb in an airport nowadays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to hug to be the deciding vote from Queens. <laughs> but take that name off. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I would say my mom's gone two years. <laughs> she's here in spirit. <laughs> well, if it's still on, you'll probably have to go to the yeah. county. I'm just curious. I'm going to ask when the guy made a note of it. Yeah, this ask. Yeah, you can do that. Somebody here on our uh, chat, uh, which I don't read that often, uh, but uh, his name is Marco, Marco and uh, he said this election will go to the Supreme Court. Why? That's fine. It may. Shouldn't be a problem. What do you mean it shouldn't the be last a problem? Last one wasn't. 64 times. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, you know, uh, couldn't the Supreme Court kind of throw the whole thing in Trump's favor? Well, I would think not. not like in 2000, yeah. Like yeah. you did with George W. Bush. Well, it did go to the Supreme Court, you remember, with uh, Al Gore. The hanging chads yeah. floor, remember that? Yeah. They were looking God, at the ballots. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah, I was like, what's going on now? It, it went to the Supreme Court then, you know, and... Uh, uh, of course, Gore was a nice guy. What yeah. he said was when they finally made that decision, he said, I abide by it. You know, I'm yeah. not going to fight it any further. You know, the only trouble was is I don't think the it, it, when they the, the Supreme Court had the authority to put W in office, I think that was up to the Supreme Court of the state of Florida. It was up to the Supreme Court of the state of Florida. Yeah, but right. it wasn't. Because but, it was, but this it, was happening in Florida. They it didn't should even... have been, but it wasn't. <clears throat> right. Yeah. See? Yeah. That's so, what I'm saying. It should have been, but it, but it didn't happen that way. So. Well, why wasn't it? Why Why did the Supreme Court, uh, were they able, able to overrule a state? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, can the Supreme Court do that? <clears throat> They just I don't know. took I, on that right. I wish Josh were here tonight. He, he could yeah. give us an answer yeah. to that question. 
I don't think there's anything in the Constitution that gives us the Supreme Court the right to do that. Hmm. But they took it anyway. I, I think if, uh, let's see, Gore was running against W, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think if Gore fought it, it might have changed things, but it might not well, have either. <clears throat> it actually turned out they counted the votes later, you know, after the election was all over and Bush is already president. Um, and they found out that Gore actually won Florida. If they had counted all the votes, if the Supreme Court had not stopped the recount, I think, I Gore think, would have won Florida. you know, if you want to think of Biden as being kind of a hero now that he decided to not run, okay, then I think you have to look upon Gore as a hero that he was just, this thing was going into what, what were, we, were we into February already by that time, maybe mm -hmm. March? Yeah, it was a long and, time. And he finally just said, okay, for the good of the country, I'll I'll, I'll accede to this. Yo, that's it, for the good of the country. Bush, yeah. I mean, Trump would never say for the good of the com country. All he he, he doesn't even himself. say for the good of the country, I want to be president. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's looking terrible, Alex, with all that makeup and stuff. He don't look well. He doesn't look well. You know who looks well? Always hunched over. No, you know who looks well? Just look at the last couple of days, the appearances of Joe Biden. That's probably the way he's relieved. Yeah. He looks so well, so lucid. He, he, he's, his face is he's bright, and it's you know he doesn't look tired. I mean, it's remember almost, he was sick when he went through yeah, all that he crap was, too. He was actually physically ill during that yeah. uh, debate. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, Trump looks good. no, but he, 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 Biden looked great, you yeah, know, and, and I'm going, you know, uh, uh, give him a little rest and he's okay, you know. You know, you know, it'd be funny, Alex, if Trump, well, it wouldn't be funny. Imagine if they say Trump, you won, and he wound up having a heart attack right that night. <laughs> you won, boom, he's well, gone. You know, one <laughs> of the things he has refused yeah. to do is give out. Not only his taxes, which yeah, we, that's never coming. I'm waiting that's for this. That's never like, coming. <laughs> yeah. But he's refusing to give out his medical. All right. Yeah, you problem. wonder what's wrong with him. Well, they say there are some problems there. There are some he cognitive. He like he talks in co incoherent a lot. There are yep. cognitive. I think he's on meds. Well, I think there's cogn uh, cognitive stuff going on there. Huh? He's not. He, could he have early forms of dementia? Maybe? Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Because, Charlie, I listen to his speeches. He just goes off in a tangent like, what the fuck is he talking about? It's like, oh, fuss. It's like, he don't, I mean, I'm not trying to make fun of him. I don't want to see anybody lose their mind. But can you imagine him running the country? Alex, was it a true Reagan lost his mind the second term? And he was oh, a, yeah. he yeah. stand in the first term. Well, he didn't lose his Alzheimer's. mind. He had, uh, he had, uh, he had Alzheimer's. Yeah. yeah. And, and essentially, um, uh, his wife was running the country. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. You know, um, because he was just out of it, totally out yeah. of it. So, you know, but I mean, in the case of, uh, of Trump, I don't think that mentally he's all there. Nope. Uh, you know, and, but, but, and how people, okay, let, let's forget everything else. How every, anybody yeah. could say, hey, I've got this guy named Trump. Who doesn't seem like he's all there, yeah. and and his mind doesn't seem alert and fresh, okay. Yeah. And then we've got Kamala, who goes up. She goes. She made how many speeches now? And I, she doesn't yeah. look like she's even withering at all on any level. She, she could work at least eight bingo boards to his one. <laughs> 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 right out. I used to help my mother with a bingo board. I can't say it. What about? That? <laughs> That's a great. I mean, way really? Of You're right. I mean, how are they voting for him still like this? All I'm saying is, is that you've got some real problems there, and mentally, and every other way. <laughs> and I and the public can see it. All they have to do is listen to his speeches. They're complete gibberish. They make no sense whatsoever. Hmm. I gotta rewind them just to hear it again. I says, I mean, I told Greg, what is he talking about? He says, turn this guy off. He's crazy. No, you can rewind you know, it as many times as you want, and they're not gonna and you make can't sense. Get it, right? It's not gonna. It's make like sense. worse salad with him. It's like, what is he talking about? It's it's sad that we have come to this. You yeah, know, I mean, 
and that there's any chance that this guy has it, it okay. he should be so far behind in the polls, it, it, it would be ridiculous. You know, I hope I why do I have a feeling at first I'm going to admit I was wrong. I thought he was going to win. Now I think I think Charlie was right. I think it's going to be a wide margin. I think he's, she's going to beat him. good. It, it, it's either going to be really close or it's going to be a, a, a just an absolute route on Kamala's part. Because I think you're right, Alex. People are seeing this guy. You gotta use common sense. I think he has that cold no, but you're talking about, I'm beginning to wonder life. about the nature of the morality of this country, and yeah. and it, you know, I'm beginning to question the 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 lucidness of this country. How this country, if this country elects Donald Trump, they deserve it. Okay? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't want to hear anything about it if they elect them. Yeah, but they deserve it. And it is, I believe, you know, I'm, I'm, I hate to be one of these people that sounds like doom and gloom, but if he's elected, that's it. Forget it. That's the end of America as we know it. They'll probably have a civil war to start with. No, we'll have a, a, war we'll, have a ci we'll have a civil war if he loses. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> I don't know. You know, but uh, yeah, and, but yeah. enough people who are voting right now who've already put your name in yep do you are you able to look at that and say what percentage of the people who live in this area mm. are are showing the similar amount of numbers as they did before or is there something totally wacky about that well that could be it too yeah i don't know that's the interesting part yeah is there an unknown that we don't know about that's just going to totally skew it? Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. And I would think, like you said, Alex, sanity has to prevail when you have to flip that switch. You know, I'm, I, I, I don't know that I, bel I believe in Americans that much anymore. I mean, know? yeah, I'm, I understand where you're coming from because I can see your point as being very valid. They got to, you know, because you're right. How do you even know how, how can he even be this close after everything that's unfolded with him? Well, it's just that in my time, as I was growing up in this country, if somebody had the the um, CV, as it were, <laughs> that Donald Trump does, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, he wouldn't have a chance. He wouldn't even get nominated, okay? Yeah. He'd be just looked upon as a nutcase. And now we're voting for a nutcase. He's, I mean, the fact that yeah. he's even on the ballot... Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. His name it, it has three nutcases on it: him, Vance, and and Kennedy. Well, Kennedy. we we don't have Kennedy on the uh, on the ballot here. Oh, you're lucky. We have it in California, I think. He is out there. Yeah, our case on our ballot too. I said he's the only Kennedy. Nobody wanted to take a pop at really. That tells you something. Yeah. Is there five states he's done? He's not dangerous to helping people. I'll let him go. <laughs> well, I think if he if he gets so many votes in California, I still, I still don't think that he will, you know, he, 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 the, the uh, electoral college will go to the, the person who gets the most votes. Yeah. So if his votes are mm. those which could be Trump's because he's going with Trump, but they're not, counted, they're not counted, they're not counted for Trump then that would make him lose the Electoral College in California, which he's going to lose anyway. Yeah, right, yeah. right. I, I think that I think anybody that votes for, for Kennedy is taking votes away from Trump. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, I don't I don't understand any of it. It doesn't make sense. And I'm nervous sense. for election night. I mean, I'm nervous to even watch the results, so... Well, yeah. I, remember, I remember distinctly uh, uh, 2016... You figured, yeah. hey, you know, it was going to be Hillary. You know, That's it was right. going to be Hillary. And then we woke up the next morning and it wasn't Hillary. Yeah, it was it, this I, guy. I, In fact, I, I, claim, I claim that, uh, that it, it, the person that was probably most amazed by what happened was Trump himself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was working the polls that night in Queens. And when they told me he was winning, I was like, What? I walked home, I took the bus, and I was like, I, and I got in the house. My brother was so, I'll never forget it. He says, what happened? He says, this fucking guy won. 
<laughs> I was like, what? I had pizza on me because I put pizza from Roses. He says, I couldn't even eat my pizza, Alex. I was so sick that my stomach really. But remember, he didn't get, he's never won the popular vote. No. Oh, never. Not once. He's never won the popular vote. In, in, in 2016, Electoral College, uh, Hillary, what, something like 3 million, 4 million? 3 million more votes than Trump. 3 million yeah. more votes than Trump? Yeah. So he lost that one by popular vote. He lost the one, of course, in uh, 2020 by popular yeah. vote. And he probably, even if he wins this one by electoral college, he's not going to win it by a popular vote because she's got the yep. popular vote right now. Which yeah. doesn't mean anything. Which it's, And it should the mean everything. College. But it should mean everything. Yeah, yep. I agree. It, it should mean the person who gets the most votes wins. I mean, that's what yep. when yep. you were in school and they had you ran for class yeah. president. They didn't say, mm -hmm. "Well, look, uh, you know, uh, we have to have the, this many different classes have to come in." Like, no, mm -hmm. we didn't have that. We said, "Whoever gets the most most votes wins." It wasn't like the stupid class had less votes. <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. The ones who were sitting there eating the glue. Michael yeah, Danchowski. Yeah, right. The remedial <laughs> class. We don't want to look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> he done the same thing the other day. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's just, I, it's I, I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. It's not the country no. I signed up for. You know, I never had. I gotta be honest with you. I never had a lot of faith in this country. I always felt that we were always kind of on a tether's edge of not really doing what was right, you know? And when it seems like when we're doing something right, they want to revert and change it. Oh, yeah. it's working. Let's get I mean, rid of it. I mean, if we if you go back and we go back to the Vietnam War, for instance, I mean, how yep. horrible was that, you know? And then I go back to a period of time when I was growing up in the 50s where you had the House on American Activities Subcommittee uh, and people were literally losing their jobs because what they thought 25 years earlier that's okay, crazy. you know it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy, and I, uh, I lost my faith in America then. Okay, yeah, that, that was the earmark of what to come. With. But I hoped that I would constantly kind of get reaffirmed every now and then that hey, it ain't that bad. You know, when Kennedy got elected president, I think I felt pretty good about that. I, I felt very good about Obama. You know, yeah. Yeah. in fact, why it is we can't elect somebody like Obama? And then turn around and elect somebody like Trump is beyond me. Yeah, it's like totally different spec. My mother said when Kennedy got killed, she was literally crying. People like it had such a profound effect. Oh yeah. Like, you know, oh, absolutely. Like, absolutely. And then that was it sixty eight, then they got they got all of them. They got Martin Luther King. I mean, they were killing everybody who was trying to make a difference, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but I mean the fact was that that uh, um, I, I just had a little bit of faith in America at a certain point after the Vietnam War that, in fact, what was good about America was there was enough of a movement against that war that we did pull out of it, you know, yeah. and that we, as, as people, uh, especially young people, could make a change by protesting it and, and going against it. And, uh, you know, we, we managed to stop that, which was a horrible, horrible situation. You remember how many Americans got killed over there? And you know what I was going to run by you guys, too, what I don't like what they do, Alex? <clears throat> the Trump, the magas, They hijack the word patriot. I never served my country. I'm not a patriot. They just use patriot now like they're like, you never, if you're a patriot if you served your country. They just use it now like just hey, so hey, okay, I serve my country. You're, you're more of a patriot, yeah. Did Donald Trump? Nope. Okay, so I'm more of a patriot than he is. <laughs> and they use right. it so loosely when it doesn't even pertain to them, really. And quite frankly, I don't think the ability to go out and kill somebody else in the name of your country is particularly a good thing. You didn't have to do that when you were in the service, did you? No, no. Good. I, I was I was stationed in Hollywood. That's nice. <laughs> <You> know, I, <laughs> Let's get a burger. And it, it was the oh, David and out back there. No, no, no. That was the way back. Yet, when. That was soon. way back okay. when. But what I used to like to say was that uh, 
I was uh, stationed in Hollywood, and uh, yeah, you could say that's kind of wimpy, but I got news for you. In my entire time that I lived in Hollywood, enemy planes never got past Santa Monica Boulevard, <laughs> and I feel oh. I did my uh, job. Nice to be. <laughs> Where you want to stay? Can I be over here? <laughs> You know, I'd be, I'd be there with you, man. I don't want, I don't want to see any action. Only if you absolutely need me, then call me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what happened though with me. Yeah. Uh, I, beca- I I was doing the news on Armed Forces Radio Ooh. out of uh, out of out of Hollywood on, Mac- on North McCadden Place. There was a mm. big facility they had there, and I would get on there and do a five minute newscast once an hour, and it went out to the South Pacific and all wow. over the South Pacific, including China, okay? And I was on a list of people to be considered a propagandist of the United <laughs> States because oh, I was oh, doing... Yeah. Because I was doing the news over our Armed Forces Radio, which then seeped into China. That's pretty cool, yeah. I was kind of worried that when we finally went to China, I'd get arrested. You know? Here is the we finally <laughs> caught you after all these years. It took you yeah. 30 years to get, get him at the airport. <laughs> oh, the way to get listeners. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, you know, I mean, uh, I, I felt that uh, I had served, <clears throat> I'd, I'd served a good function. You know, I was a propagandist for the United States. There you go. You know. So, I mean, whatever. So... Ah, God, you know, just we live in strange times. And I I just I feel bad that there are certain people that, you know, that can find this guy a good idea. I I can see how people are Republicans and I can see how they want to, you know, go for Republican ideals. But this guy doesn't even represent Republican ideals. If I was a Republican, I would be so put off put by him. Oh yeah. Well, former he, presidents are put off by him. Yeah. Uh, I mean Bush Cheney was vice president, but George W. Bush hates him too. Yeah. Yep. You know, let let's get back to, to, to some civility here and get away from people who who really don't have your best interest at heart. Okay? The only reason he wants to become president is so that he doesn't get convicted, he doesn't get put on trial, and so that he also uh, doesn't uh, lose a lot of money. You know that he's trying. He he owes a lot of money, and he's trying to avoid that. And uh, this will. That's the only reason he's running for president. In fact, have you ever heard of a president who made a fortune out of merch? Yeah, he's doing it like crazy, man. He's that doing watches so- now. Hundred thousand dollar watches. Hundred thousand dollar watch. And I bet you it's made in China to watch. Yeah, I- probably a Timex with Trump's name on it. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a hundred thousand dollars and I was I was thinking maybe of buying one of those watches. You know, they got it's like his coins, his silver coins got like what thirty percent or twenty percent so silver or something stupid? <laughs> You're right. I mean, has he ever seen a president do this? It's just no. Just, we've never seen a president. This do is that. insane. Uh, uh, when you're money. running, yeah, you know, hey, if, when you're t- running, things like t-shirts and stuff like that, you know, caps. Right. You got to tell us the truth, though, Tony. You're collecting the cards. I know you are. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I sold it some comic for 110 bucks and nine six CGC. Oh, yeah. Let these suckers buy it. It cost me two bucks. It cost me what a great right. Price. There they you paid go. The There's nothing wrong with that, Tony. <laughs> that's, that's, that's entrepreneurship. That's okay. Yep. Yes. You know what it is? I sold one. It's the Barack Panther versus the Tremendous Trump. It's a fighting cover. <laughs> Nice, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I told my brother, I paid the Verizon bill with this sucker's comic. <laughs> it's such a bum, but I, I, you're right, though. I have to admit, I'm a little bit of a scoundrel. You're a little gonna... bit of a scoundrel. <laughs> I, you know, I can't, I gotta take their money out because they love hey, me. Yeah, it. yeah, do it if they're willing to give you that money. Take yeah, it, I gotta take it. <laughs> My yeah. brother's laughing when I do that. <laughs> do you have the do you, ha- do, do you have the trading cards? You have the- I don't do the trading cards. Actually, I did my super uh, my superhero cards. I send in from the Wonder Bread. I'll tell you next week. Okay. I had all the bread cards. Yeah, but you know, you're, you're like for instance, they've got those. Uh, what, what is it? Those digital cards that he's doing. Those. Uh, oh yeah, I don't like the digital. That, cards. I would yeah. uh, forget that. Anyway, yeah, hey, listen, uh, there, there's the theme, and uh, there's the week, and, uh, right. uh, you know, it's been a nice hour here. I've enjoyed it with you people. Really terrific. 
Just the regular people usually call the program. And not a lot of them tonight. Shame on you. In fact, all of you didn't call. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate it. Uh, Alan, thank good you. to have you here. A wonderful time to be had by us with Charlie. And, uh, 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 of course, our good friend, uh, uh, Kevin. And Tony. Thank you so much. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Oops, where did where, where I go? Uh, and I really have appreciated your uh, being here. Uh, next is Amy. She's here with The Intersection. She'll be taking your calls on uh, Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday at our little thing we like to call the pop-up show at four o'clock on uh, um, um, where do you call it uh, <laughs> on Facebook who by the way tonight wanted me to take off something I'll, I'll tell you about that next week uh, but they're, 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 they're uh, over at Facebook they're anti-semitic and I'll prove it I will prove it anyway that's it uh, hey I gotta go uh, sorry uh, we'll see you again uh, also next Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, it's always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.